Hello and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going to talk about congruent figures and transformations in geometry. Okay, what are congruent figures? Well, congruent figures mean that all pairs of corresponding parts of the figures are going to be congruent. Now, the figures don't necessarily have to be a triangle. They just have to be some type of polygon. So it can be a, uh, some type of four-sided figure, or an octagon, uh, or a pentagon of some sort. So all that's required for congruent figures to be congruent is that all pairs of corresponding parts are congruent. So what do we mean by pairs of corresponding parts? Well, in the case of a triangle, what we mean is that all of the sides, the corresponding sides, are congruent, and all of the corresponding angles are going to be congruent. And there's a particular order that we write the triangles and also the congruent figures in. And we need to pay attention to this. So if I say that triangle BAD is congruent to triangle SLK, then that means that segment BA is congruent to segment SL, segment AD is congruent to LK, and segment BD is congruent to KS. So you see that there's an order in which you write the uh, vertices of the triangle so that the vertices correspond to uh, the congruent vertices and segments of the uh, congruent corresponding triangle. So B, A, S, L, A, D, L, K, and D, B, and K, S are all congruent. Now, <clears throat> if those parts were congruent, I would not be able to say that, assuming that we weren't dealing uh, with an equilateral triangle, I would not be able to say that triangle BAD was congruent to triangle LKS. Okay, so order matters in the way that you identify the triangle and the congruency between the two corresponding triangles. So again, it's BA congruent to SL, AD congruent to LK, DB congruent to KS. Now it also means that angle B is congruent to S, angle A is congruent to L, and angle D is congruent to K. So if I were to mark up my triangle with my tick marks, I would B, angle B is congruent to K, angle A is congruent to angle L, and angle D, and I'll make this three here, is congruent to angle K. In the same fashion, we know that uh, segment BA is congruent to SL, Segment AD, now with two tick marks, is congruent to segment LK. And segment BD is congruent to segment SK. So very important, the order in which you identify the triangle and the corresponding triangle. The corresponding segments all are congruent in congruent triangles. Corresponding angles are all congruent. OK, let's talk about transformations. There are different types of transformations. The first is called a reflection. And a reflection is just a flip of a shape over a line. And the line that it flips over is called the line of reflection. So I have on the right hand side, I have my uh, triangle here. And it's flipped over this line of reflection. So when I do that, the corresponding sides and then the angles are all going to be congruent. So if I flip this triangle over the line of reflection, I've created two congruent triangles. So I have these two tick marks means these uh, segments are the same, these segments are the same, and then I also have this line, which of course is going to be congruent to itself. And in the next lesson, we'll talk about what's required in order for two triangles to be congruent. But essentially, I'm flipping one triangle over a line uh, of reflection for a reflection. In a translation, we're just sliding or shifting the figure a given amount. Um, we can shift it just uh, along the x-axis, or we can shift it along the y-axis only, or we can shift it both along the x and y axes. But basically, a translation is just a shifting or a sliding of a figure. So the characterization or the dimensions of the figure remain the same. It's just that it moves to the right, to the left, up or down by a given amount. So all points of the figure are going to move a specific x, y amount uh, right, left, up, or down. And again, the figure retains its shape just as it does with a reflection. 
Okay, two more to give you on transformations. One is a rotation and the other is a dilation. In a rotation, I'm just turning all the points in a clockwise or counterclockwise uh, direction by a given degree. And the rotated figures keep their shape. So this, these two triangles are congruent to each other. I'm just rotating each of the points by a given amount until each of the amounts are rotated. Again, the figure retains its shape and it ends at a particular location. And finally, a dilation uh, is either shrinking or expanding of a figure by a given factor. So I could, in this case, let's just say that I shrink this circle by a factor of one half. I could also expand, uh, in this case, the smaller circle by a factor of two. Um, those would both be dilations in a transformation.